you and I are created in the image of God, which means we do share in God's goodness. However, I want to take this deeper because I have a different question around this that I think we need to ponder. And that is because we're created good in the image of God, does that mean that all of us live out that goodness? Or do we grow into the goodness of God that's within us? And uh, or a different way of asking this question is, are, are we created good or do we become good? And the answer to that is yes and yes. Yes to both. And I'm going to explain that, okay? Again, I want to invite you over to my Facebook group called Vibrant Life with Brent Locker. We're having some amazing discussions around the goodness of God. Would love for you to come on over and be part of that. And uh, in this video, I want to talk about, about how it is that if we're created because we are created in the image of God, and so therefore we share in his likeness, in his goodness, then uh, why is it? that uh, we don't always live out that goodness. In other words, is there a growth in us that's required in order to express the goodness that's within? And I would say absolutely. And in order to talk about that, I want to talk about a different word called glory, God's glory, the glory that he shares with us. Now that word glory, um, it, it's kind of a I would just say it's a churchy word. It's not a word that's used a lot outside of the church realm, glory. But it's a really important word. Um, it, it's about God's glory. is about God's presence. It's, uh, it's a word associated with the, the weightiness of who God is. Like uh, not just weight as in pounds. That's not what we're talking about. But oh my goodness, when, when God starts showing up <laughs> in showing up in our hearts and in, in an environment and I've been in environments where God's presence suddenly just seems to be magnified and like oh my goodness I can barely contain it there is often this weightiness that is just about the wow the, the goodness and the the yumminess and the tenderness of God that seems to be filling us up. It's, it's described in, uh, there's a place in the Old Testament where it's described where God's glory comes and in, in such measure that, that even the priests who are supposed to be doing their duties, they can't even stand. They're on the floor. And the reason why that they can't stand is because all of them were together. The, the, uh, the people of God were together. But they started to sing and worship and the instruments were playing. And they were singing, the Lord is good and his faithfulness endures forever. Over and over again, the Lord is good. The Lord is good. His faithfulness endures forever. And it's like heaven got so excited, like God himself was so thrilled that his kids were getting it. Yes, this is my heart. You haven't been understanding my heart, but now you do. And so as they were singing the truth over and over again, he's good, he's good, he's good. His love endures forever. There's nothing that can stop it. It's like God was so attracted to the truth that we that they, that they were singing that that his presence came so much so people couldn't stand. That was the glory. So God shares his glory with us. Now, some might go to a passage in Isaiah where, where it appears to say the exact opposite, where he says, I am the Lord and, and I don't share my glory with another. I won't share my glory with another. Here's the thing. We are not another. This is what we really have to start understanding. We God has invited us into union with himself. We are one with Christ, Christ with us. 
And so God shares, willingly shares his glory with us. What, what is his glory? Well, I'm going to tell you that a lot of the glory is the very presence, the nature, the goodness of God. Remember when Moses, he asks God, he says, God, would you show me your glory? That was his request. And God says, all right, then I'm going to, I'm going to pass before you and I'm going to show you my goodness. I'm going to let my goodness pass before you. So we see here that when Moses is asking God, I want to see your glory. God's like, okay, here's my goodness. Here it comes. I'm loving. I'm faithful. I'm kind. Here's my goodness. So today, that was Moses. Today, when you and I ask and we say, God, show me your glory. You know what God says to you, to me? You know what he says? He says, look in the mirror. You want to see my glory, my goodness? Look into your own eyes because I have made my home inside of you. I've given you my glory. It's inside of you, which is my goodness, my nature, my kindness. Now, does this grow? It's all in there. Think of it like again like a seed, right? You plant a seed in the garden, you water it, it's going to grow. You plant Pumpkin seeds, pumpkins will grow. You plant, right? You plant other seeds, whatever they are, corn seeds, the corn is going to grow. What has God placed in us? A glory seed. His glory is in us. His kindness, his goodness, it's in us. And that's what's going to grow. Now, now, so there is a process. There is a growth. Now, how does this grow within us? There's a scripture in, in 2 Corinthians 3.18 that describes what's going on, okay? And it says that it says that we can all draw close to the Lord with the veil that's been removed from our faces. What, what is that veil that was removed? Well, that was Jesus dying on the cross that took from us the the inability to be able to see God's glory within us. The, the original sin, the original problem with Adam was his inability or his unwillingness to trust the goodness of God. He made his own decision. I'm going to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which means I'm going to decide for myself what I think is true. It, it it's, it sounds noble, it's not noble, it, because what he did is he exchanged the truth of God for a lie. He exchanged the glory of God that was already in him for a lie, where suddenly he felt like he was not complete. He was less than. He was looking for something to make himself complete when he already was. And, that, and that's the same issue we have when we want to depend on our own selves to, to determine how we think we're doing. And, and the truth is that God says, if you would just allow me to tell you who you are, and, and if you would allow, if you would choose to yield to my spirit within you, and walk by the power of my spirit, and let me tell you, who you are and what you carry, I will transform you with that. But that is a, still a choice. It's not a one-time choice. It's a continual choice. Every time we find ourselves back to trying to um, decide for ourselves what we think is right or wrong, trying to make ourselves better, um, trying judging ourselves and judging people around us and thinking we don't measure up, when in reality, God says, I've already put everything inside of you that you need. Would you let me express it through you? Would you let me show you what is true and what is not true of the you that I created? And when we let him do that, oh my goodness, this is where the transformation keeps taking place. And so this scripture that I'm going to continue, it's talking about how, how we move from glory to glory 
That means there's there's greater and greater elements of the kindness and goodness of God in us that are going to be displayed. How is that done? Let me go on in this verse. It says, with no veil, now we all become like mirrors who brightly reflect the glory of the Lord Jesus. Didn't I just say that? That when we say, God, show me your glory, he says, look in the mirror because Christ is in you. He's in you. And and he's shining brightly from you. Okay? It goes on. We are being transfigured or transformed into his very image as we move from one brighter level of glory to another. And this glorious transfiguration, this transformation, it comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. So here we see the key is never going to be us trying to get our acts together. It's not because we try to be a better person. There's there's actually nothing wrong with that. Okay, that's again, that's noble and that's good. It's just the transformation that he's going to bring about is going to bring about such a brilliance, uh, such 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 a love for people, a kindness for people that you didn't even know you had because it comes straight from the Lord. And this is what he's doing in our lives. This is why we will display the, the love, the grace, the kindness, the goodness of Jesus more and more and more. This is your destiny, friends. Your destiny is to walk closely with the Lord, to enjoy Him, and then to display His goodness everywhere you go. And this really is the good news of the gospel. The gospel is good news. It's grace. It's God in you, doing through you what you couldn't do for yourselves. This is the beauty of a life that feels fulfilled. So so we don't want to go back to the feeling that Adam and Eve had after they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, where where they felt less than, they felt incomplete, even though they had everything within them. You and I now are free. The veil has been taken off. Remember remember when Jesus died? It says that there, this veil was torn in two. It was the veil, uh, this thick curtain that was placed between the Holy of Holies where only the high priest could go and then everybody else. That was torn because God said, no more. It was as if the Lord was was shouting, no more separation. I've taken care of that. My kids, all of my kids, they get to come into the Holy of Holies. They get to enjoy me personally, face to face. And in that face to face encounter, this is how we are transformed. This is why we need times to sit with the Lord, times to ask him, God, how do you see me? Lord, I just want to see your face beaming at me, even on what I think is my worst day. You see, that's what transforms us. That's actually what leads us. It's his kindness that leads us to repentance. When he chooses to love us, even when we feel unlovable, that's what changes us. We say, God, how could you love me like this? He says, by my choice, by my covenant, because I see who you really are. And do you see the real nature of the change is that he believes in you. He's always believed in you. He's not going to stop believing in you. And he keeps showing you who you are until you believe it. See, if we think that we're a bad person to the core, and we try to change our bad behavior by being less bad, friends, that's never going to work. Oh, maybe by little increments. But you see, that's not the freedom. We will still feel incomplete and less than. And God says, no, I've put a seed in you. It's a seed of my glory and my goodness, and it's already in you. So instead, I want you to see yourselves as good, created in my image, sharing my glory. And in that, you will start to realize who you are. And then, instead of trying to be less bad, you're going to understand that I say you are pure. You are righteous. You are altogether good because I made you that way. And when you see yourself that way, you start to make different choices because of who you know yourself to be. 
This is the transformation, and it's all a work of God's Spirit. So we're going to stop right now and say, Holy Spirit, help me. Holy Spirit, I invite you to show me what's true about what my Father says about me, what Jesus has done for me. Holy Spirit, I yield to your life in me that is bringing about the very growth of the seed of God's glory that's been planted in me. I choose not to judge for myself how I think I'm doing or the people around me, but instead I trust you. I'm going to live life in the Spirit, the Spirit of God, because that's where life and joy righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. That's where it flows from. Thank you, Lord. So friends, I encourage you on this journey. Keep going. Don't be discouraged. We're all, we're all still trying to understand who God says we are. It's not, don't be discouraged, but do go back to trusting the Lord to tell you what is true of you. That's where all of the joy is going to flow from. All right. So I bless you in this journey.